Hey everybody, Eric here. And today I want to share with you some of my tips for combining both 2D and 3D objects into one component in order to get the best of both worlds when creating floor plans right here in SketchUp. So when I say best of both worlds, I mean that whether you like it or not, we have to work at some point with 2D information, even though we're a 3D modeling app. And I say 2D information both on the front end, so you might get something like a floor plan that was drawn in an application like CAD, in which case you have CAD blocks, which then become SketchUp components. That's a 2D com block that you're starting with before you begin to work in 3D, whether you're building something from scratch or you're replacing it with an object from 3D Warehouse. Now, on the other end, we also want to think about when we go to layout. We might be taking our custom-built furnishing or our floor plan and then communicating the design with somebody else, also again in 2D. So whether it's on the front end, the middle, the back end, we're gonna work back and forth between 2D and 3D, and I wanna share with you my process for doing that right now. So I've got a floor plan here. Um, this is a co-working space. It's kind of a commercial interiors that we're gonna work on. And I've got a few objects that some of these things I built from scratch and some things that I found online. So what I wanna do is kind of cover a what I think is a common workflow, which is that you're starting with a floor plan that maybe was done in a program like CAD, and then now you need to turn it into a 3D model. So if I'm going to change my camera perspective to ortho for this, and I may be switching back and forth, but just so you know, because we're talking about floor plans, I'm probably going to look at it in plan view. So it looks pretty good in plan view. Obviously, we're SketchUp, we're 3D when you tilt it. Yeah, not so much. So let's go ahead and get started converting our 2D plan into a 3D one. Before I do that, I want to kind of also state or show that I have two tags set up. One of them is called Furniture 2D and one is 3D. And that's because I want to separate. I want to kind of pre-think about organizing my plan information on two different tags. And you'll see why here. So let's just go ahead and do it. I'm going to take this table. I'm going to copy it. And then I'm going to go into my table group. And I'm going to go grab, find this table symbol, which is really just a rectangle, and paste my table right into the table and chairs component. And you can see because it's a component, it repeats it for all of them. Now, before I pop out of here, I am going to assign this 3D table to my 3D furnishings tag. And if I want to, I don't have to, but sometimes I will turn color by tag on just to make sure that that was done properly. And you can see I've already got my, my table assigned to the 2D tag. Now, if it's not for some reason, we can just go ahead and undo that. I'll just undo that step just to show you how easy that is. So we can go ahead and assign the 2D, and then you can see the color change to blue, and the 3D once again, and the color changes to this kind of yellow color that just shows me that I can then toggle them back and forth or on and off. So let's do um, a couple more. Let's grab this plant and this chair. So let's do the chair first. Show you how kind of easy this is. Go back into that component. I copied that chair. I'm just gonna go ahead and paste this here, right there. And I'm probably going to need to rotate that 90 degrees so it's sort of facing the right way. And then there you go. Now it's pink by default, that's untagged. That just kind of tells me, hey, pink means untagged. Go ahead or red, depending on how you perceive this color, I'm gonna go ahead and put that on the 3D tag. Again, same thing, super simple. And let's do one more while we're at it, just because I think it helps to be able to see a few different examples. This one has not been placed on a tag. So what we wanna do is grab this one again, same thing, 3D for the plant and 2D for the symbol. So when we switch to plan view using keyboard shortcut for that, you can see right now we've got both of them overlapping. So what I want to do is I'm probably not going to show both at the same time. I have to decide which that I want to show. Let's go ahead and turn the 2D off and assume that, hey, I did all this work making this floor plan in 3D. Why would I not show that in 3D? Well, one reason is because while it looks pretty good, um, this may or may not read as a plant, first of all, if you look at the plant symbol. And second of all, the chair, well, we're fairly simple. It is a 3D chair. And so if I try to add something like dimensions to this and say, okay, I want this chair, I want these chairs spaced, you know, certain, you can see I'm having trouble finding, it's trying to snap to all this sort of hidden geometry because this is a 3D chair after all. 
So if I started, if I snap here to here, my dimension string may be a little bit off. So I'm having a little bit of trouble. Maybe I can find that center point if I zoom in. But again, now I'm not doing my dimensions. I wouldn't normally do them here. I would do them in layout. But just dimensioning to a 3D object might be a little bit trickier. So if I compare that to the 2D version and I switch to my dimension, you can see I have no problems at all. It just grabs that center point and there we go. We're good to go. So same thing here. If I wanted to go from the edge of the table to say the center of the chair, that's super, super easy because I'm dimensioning on just a 2D, a very simple sort of 2D object. And besides dimensions, also just visually the style, by having them separate, you can just kind of control the visibility. Like for example, this plant reads more as like a potted palm. Whereas if you go to the 3D symbol, you know, with all this extra geometry and stuff, it may or may not read the way you want it to. So just something to think about. Again, we can always combine this method and you can have some objects that you say, let's let the 3D read, that works better. Or others, let's let the 2D read. Or in this case of the table, if you have just a rectangle, it doesn't really matter what reads um, for the table, um, unless of course you want to show the chairs underneath it, in which case having them sit on the same plane is the advantage. So I want to show you one more example, just to kind of reiterate this point, and it's but for a slightly different reason. I'm going to grab this couch over here, and I want to go ahead and place this couch inside of this couch group or this couch component. I'm going to place that in there, and I'm going to flip that around, and there we go. Okay. So now this couch isn't super, super high poly, but if I turn my hidden geometry on, you can see that it is high enough that I may not want to send this to layout, for example. And then if I like rendering my floor plans in vector mode so that I can get that crisp, clean line that can be edited in a PDF editor or something like that, this is a little bit more information than I probably need to render in vector. So if I'm rendering in raster, that's probably fine. But in this case, it's I'm, I'm basically asking layout to do a lot more work because it has to render every single one of these edges when um, it's not really buying me anything when you kind of zoom out and you see it at this level. So in this case, this would just be another example of, and I skipped this step because I was talking, but I need to put this on the furniture 3D tag so it disappears. And this would just be another example where I'm better off working with the more simplistic 2D symbol rather than the 3D one um, that's just going to maybe increase my render times later, depending on what I'm trying to do with it. So something to think about. And lastly, like I said, is that the 2D goes um, both directions. Now, we can also start with, for example, if I wanted to start with a 3D object, I can also embed a 2D object into this. So whether this is hand-drawn or imported CAD block, I'm just going to grab steel for myself over here. I've got this door swing. You can also come back later after the fact, after your model's built, and come in and place 2D objects. Just got to orient it correctly into the model. And then here you go, uh, same thing. I would just double check to make sure that this is placed on the 2D tag. And I would make sure that this, everything else besides those two doors is put on the 3D tag. And I will check that the color and that looks pretty good. So the cool thing about that is and if I wanted to go into plan view like this, now I can choose to show the door swing or not just by toggling that tag on and off. Again, if I wanted to add, if I wanted to dash that, if you wanted to show that, show it as like not really there because it's not physically there, it's just kind of a representation of an idea of the swing. Um, you can always change the line type. And I just like being able to control that separately from the 3D object. So I want to stop there because I think you get the idea, but I do want to also at the same time plug, uh, if you liked what you learned here, or you want to learn a little bit more about this model that I'm working on, or that I built the model of where we got the components and where we got the furnishings and how to build some of these objects for sc from scratch. I do want to kind of plug really quick, learn.sketchup.com. Check that out. What you're going to get is SketchUp Campus has a bunch of free courses for learning um, some of our core fundamentals, but also some of the more complex industry specific stuff like I just covered here in commercial interiors. So if you click on that course, enroll for free, and it's got all kinds of cool stuff in addition to the tips that I just shared with you, 
Um, got a lot more information about starting from scratch and taking a floor plan all the way to the finish line. I'm going to leave you there. I just want to say thanks for watching as always. I hope these tips are helpful. If you work a different way, if you've got a different way to do it and you say, hey, actually combining two things in one component is not a good idea and here's because, here's why, I'd like to know that. So leave a comment below. Let us know what you think either way because these videos, as much as we like making them, uh, we like it better when it's something you want to see. So I'm going to say thanks and I will see you all next time.